everybody, my name is Jay Martin. This is a Napoleon game on the Arcole map. And someone who's actually Italian confirms with me that it's pronounced Arcole. And if uh, I read the history books correctly, right about here is the point where in real life Napoleon almost got his ass shot. But he didn't. In fact, the guy standing next to him got his ass shot. But anyway, that's a little history for you. This particular game is a 3 versus 4 game. Whoa, where are we at? This map's huge, so it takes forever to run up. This is a 3 versus 4 game. Let me start on the far left side. Uh, my team is over here, and it is the usual cast of characters. Uh, this is Trip Hammer, who's GB. I'm in the center. My name is Jay Martin. I'm playing as GB as well. Be a risky move, putting me in the center. And on the right side, playing as France, is Riscard. I don't remember the opponent's names, but uh, that's okay. Nice guys. Classy game we had here. Okay, uh, I have a, a lot I want to talk about. I made a bunch of notes for this game. Uh, and I, I want to show you some of the action, and, but then I have some kind of big picture things that I want to tie into it too. The first is I want to talk about this map a little bit. First of all, this is the first game I've played on this map since like I did the historical battles when I first got the game. And there's a lot of little peculiarities about this map that uh, I kind of learned in the process of this game. Uh, the first is, let's start on the left side. There are three ways to cross. See these areas right there? You can actually walk units across that. So on the left side, let me try to get you a good view uh, of the whole battlefield. There is this bridge on the left, and there are th one, two, three separate areas that you can cross on the left side. And then the river comes around, and in the center of the map, there's a crossing here, and then the actual, you know, Arcole Bridge that crosses into the town. And then on the far right side, there is a crossing right here. Okay, so you kind of have three areas you can cross. The right side, single crossing. The left side, single crossing. I'm not even, or the center, single crossing. I'm not even going to count this because this is suicide. And then, uh, then on the left side, you have these kind of three crossings that are close together. Okay, this is important. Um, obviously, the left side is the best place to try to cross. Now, let's make an assumption that obviously it's a lot easier to defend <laughs> to defend a river crossing than to cross a fucking river. So your opponents are probably going to camp. That's if you gave me the option, that's the safer bet. But you know we're attackers, so we're going to try to attack here. Um, so, but the idea is that the left side is really where it's at. That that seems to be the easiest place to cross. Um, if your opponents over are aggressive, this center area of the map here that kind of looks like a face, uh, it is kind of interesting. Um, I think this is bad. If I was the center player here, I would not come in this direction because our player here can use this crossing to get it on your flank a little bit. And this is just a really awkward place to have a firefight because there's just not a lot of real estate. It's all taken up by lakes. Um, so that's kind of bad. Um, the the second thing I wanted to mention about this map is just how little room there is for anything. Like this isn't like grassy flatlands. You can't just stretch twenty units across. I mean, you're talking about the relevant areas of the map where you might actually have a firefight is like the width of this crossing. So I've wound up finding myself having a lot of units that I didn't have any use for, and you know, a lot of units in reserve, and it was hard to use my units. Um, yada yada yada. Like you know, you're gonna fight over these crossings and these crossings are really narrow so that's something to keep in mind I also thought and, and I haven't tried this out so I'm not sure but this might be this map might be one of those rare instances where rifles or 125 range units are actually good um, by all means leave a comment if you have experience playing this map but um, they, this occurs to me like that that rifles might actually be good here the slow reload time probably doesn't matter but the range matters and the accuracy really matters so just something to think about. My next game I play in this map, I might bring a rifle or two uh, to uh, try it out. Um, I might bring a might bring a rifle or two to try it out. I want to give you a little update on what's going on in the game. Let's start on the right flank. Riskard, again, this is a 3 versus 4, so there's 4 opponents. These two right side guys here. Riskard is deployed real far back, uh, which at first I didn't understand, but that turns out to be some Sun Tzu shit that I'll get back to in a minute. In the center, against this Prussian guy, uh, He's kind of his job is kind of to guard these two crossings, and he is filtering units across this gap here, um, which 
I realized a little too late could be really bad for me, uh, especially because I don't have any light infantry on this side, so his lights here will be able to outrange me. So this is me trying to redeploy to meet this threat here, and then he's obviously guarding this crossing uh, right there. So I'm in the center, and about half of my army is engaged in this area. Our big plan, as kind of I alluded to, uh, was to try to uh, pass on the left. Um, these guys do make a, a, a big blunder that makes our job a lot easier, and that is that they have um, totally overloaded this area here with guarding these two areas. And what they're doing is they're leaving this passage unguarded, and Trip Hammer is moving units up that area now. But what um, we do is kind of skirmish fight. Those are my lights there um, to kind of peck away at those units. And they have completely overloaded this bridge with firepower. This is just completely redundant and not a good idea. If, if you if you happen to be playing this, this is not really that relevant. Okay, so anyway, that's what's going on. Um, on the far right side, Riskard is holding back, and uh, I'm just kind of trying to redeploy to deal with this threat that's emerging across the bridge here, and then maybe find a way to get across this crossing myself, and then I'm shooting here. Trip Hammer is moving hard to get across uh, this uh, crossing here, and uh, otherwise we're just kind of baiting them into keeping a lot of units here. So that's what we're doing. Okay. So we already talked about the map a little bit. There's a couple things that I've learned about playing all these three versus four games in the last couple of weeks. The first is that um, I, I still haven't come up with a really good way to uh, express this idea because I, I don't think it's really um, complete in my head yet. But the more and more I play these three v four games, the more it kind of occurs to me that a really important skill in this game or is about meta positioning or where on the field you put your units from a big picture perspective. You know, like we can watch the replays from way up here or whatever. You can kind of chart the progress of the battle. They put them in fast forward. Those, those replays always really, really interested me. And if you watch enough games from this perspective, you kind of, and you can watch them and fast forward, you kind of like, oh, well, just more flags there winds up being a win. And um, it, it really starts to occur to me more and more how important the kind of meta positioning idea is. And I know that's really vague, um, and I'm going to try to give you some more concrete examples to ascertain that, but a really good example of that might be right here, that, uh, that Trip is able to move a whole bunch of troops over a, and get across the river, and now we're able to engage them, and the, although we have a lot of problems on this side of the river with Trip's army, but that big movement itself was really, really powerful from a meta or a big picture perspective, the same way that Riskard having his whole army back here. Um, what what Riskard did is he baited this guy to actually cross the stream so that he they could actually have an engagement, so that they could actually have a fight. I mean, this was brilliant. I didn't I, I didn't really understand Riskard's logic when he was doing this, um, but his whole concept was well, if I get real up close to the stream, then we're just going to stare at each other and nobody's going to want to cross, but if I stay back far enough, then I can encourage this guy to cross, and then we can have a fair fight in the open field. Um, pretty damn smart. And the more and more I play these 3v4s, the more I, I learn that uh, the, the really important skill, or something really, really important, is the kind of big picture positioning on the field. And again, that's that's a much more vague than I want it to be conceptually right now, but I'll, I'll think about the issue and, and um, maybe in a future video I can flesh that out a little bit more. Um, I, uh, uh, anyway, I'll carry on. Um, the second thing that I've learned doing the 3v4s is we're playing all of them on terrain maps. And um, Playing on the terrain maps is different than playing on grassy. And a little background about me: about probably in uh, you know 90% of the games that I've ever played, I've played on grassy. And I think the merits of grassy are really, really interesting. It's just flat. It's like a chessboard. It's all about positional advantage. There's no terrain features to give anybody um, like a bonus or anything. It's just even. It's level. It's all about maneuver. And I really, really like that. I think that's really, really interesting. What um, this is, however, uh, what what this 3v4 game on a train map really represents is a different sort of skill set. It, 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 it privileges the kind of meta positioning. It does privilege tactical maneuver and everything, but 
not as much as it sort of privileges meta unit positioning uh, as opposed to the tactical speed of maneuver and really fast positional advantage that a match on grassy shows you as opposed to the slower uh, more controlled positional advantage that uh, a uh, 3v4 on a, on, a, on a big bottleneck map like this encourages. And another look at this map, I mean, this map is really interesting because it's so fragmented. There's like so many different little theaters here, like this area here, and then this area here, and this area here, and arguably up here, are kind of the areas that you would expect to have engagement on this map. And it's interesting because they're all so separated from each other, and it's all about who can funnel the most troops into... Um, the most important area, you know what I mean? And um, again, this concept is a little more vague than I hope it would be, but um, uh, you're, you, you kind of need a different skill set to play on uh, this map, or not a different skill set that's all valuable, but uh, to play in this map requires, you, you can't engage this, this type of game the same way that you engage a game on grassy. A 1v1 in Grassy, for instance. Um, and, and actually, we were kind of talking about this issue while we were playing the game, and Tripp made a comment that I thought was kind of interesting. He said that, well, the, the two skill sets are a bit different. And he said, but the, the fast maneuver positional advantage game of Grassy Flatlands is your base skill. You have to have that skill to do well at this type of game. You can't just play this type of game and then transition to grassy. You'll just, you'll just get destroyed um, against a dedicated 1v1 grassy player. And I think he's right um, because this plotting, slow game, etc. Um, ah, that's not what I meant to say. But anyway, this, this slower, more meta-positional advantage game is a lot, lot different than the faster um, tactical positional advantage game that you'd have in a 1v1 in Grassy Flatlands. And I thought that was a really, really interesting comment. And uh, again, something that continues to blow my mind about the um, depth of this game, or why I think it's really, really interesting. The second, the third thing that I've learned about playing these 3v4s is you kind of just, to enjoy them, uh, I, I always used to hate playing on, well not hate playing on train maps, but I just felt a little uneasy on them. And I think that the reason I always felt uneasy on them is because I used to play the majority of my games on Grassy, is that you really just have to accept and kind of in your brain accept the fact that the pace of this game is a lot different. This game is going to take about an hour to play, and you can do a Grassy 1v1 in about 10 minutes, right? And, and it's kind of like one of those things, I don't know, like you get in the car to take like a long car ride. Well, if you get in there and you, you're kind of antsy and impatient the whole time, then you're going to have a horrible time. But if you just kind of accept the fact when you get in the car that, all right, I'm going to be in this fucking car all day. Let's turn the radio on and let me open a good book or something. Then the time actually passes kind of, you know, oh, kind of more quickly. You know, it's kind of that that whole car ride you know, paradox or whatever, but you just kind of have, when you, you got to play these terrain maps, you kind of just have to accept in your brain that this is going to take a little bit longer and I'm going to be patient and I'll be okay with that. And once I kind of accepted that or started to understand that, then, um, my ability, I started playing a lot better at these games. And I thought that was kind of an interesting thing to note. The, the last kind of comment I, I want to make about what I've learned playing three versus four, um, lately is, is, I don't want to say that CAV is overrated, um, but in, on a map like this, CAV is obviously shit because CAV can't maneuver anywhere. Um, but CAV is kind of overrated, and I think that pretty much everyone who plays Napoleon Total War doesn't use their CAV optimally. I'm really, really learning that, and I include myself in that. In these games, I generally bring two CAV units. I brought two CAV units to this game, and the, the game we played next, I went down to only bringing one CAV unit. I don't think that Trip and Aris, they didn't bring CAV at all, I think, for this game. Um, but, and what's kind of, what I've learned, too, is I'll play these games with a very small amount of CAV, and it's really, really taught me how to be... Uh, careful with my calf and so you know i'll play these games and then i'll go back and play a couple 1v1s on grassy and i'll find myself the other day i played a couple games against a handful of really really good players um which was fun and in those 1v1 grassy games against really really good players i i, I found myself 
it was kind of nearing the end game and I hadn't used my calf yet. And I was like, oh, I kind of just forgot I had them. Like I, I kind of trained myself or got myself out of the habit of throwing away my calf really early. And so when you play these three versus four games, it really teaches you to be really, really careful with your units and more importantly with your calf. And that, that skill really transitions well to the 1v1 grassy game or even the 3v3 grassy game. Um, because you just you kind of in, inherently learn to be really really careful with your calf, and then you find that when you do um, you know commit your calf, that you, you get a much better value for them because you're a lot more careful with them, and you you want them to stick around. A lot of times you'll have a unit like see this unit here. I've already used this calf unit in the game. It's already down to 16. Well, in most games I just would have kept that calf unit trucking and tried to disrupt their fire a little bit longer. But here um, I. Uh, pulled them out as soon as possible and so I still have a cav units that that I can make another charge with and that is going to you know could theoretically be useful for later in the game but um but th think about how you use your cav and and the odds are really good that you're being um not too aggressive with your cav it's good to be aggressive with the cav but you're not being you're not using your cav as well as you could be it's kind of kind of what I want to get at um, so those are kind of some thoughts that have occurred to me uh, playing 3v4 games lately. Let me give you a little update on the game state. That was my general dine right there. Trip Hammer's general is already dead. And what we've done is our movement up the left here has been really successful. Trip Hammer has got what's left of his army um, after fighting through there, kind of deployed on their rear there. And I'm actually having some success able to move um, my lights. We're going to chase the Spanish guy away. So I'm actually going to clear the crossing right here. And we're going to catch um, what's left of these two players in a uh, pincher movement. Uh, these three units, these Prussian line units, are units that came from this player here. And he's uh, right now thinking about pulling this back. And that kind of sums up the left side of the field. We're actually doing pretty good on it. In the center, again right here across the bridge, I've got three line units holding them off. More on that in a moment. And I am having some success kind of inching my way up on this crossing right here like I just routed his light unit. So I, I am going to be able to make a push there. And then in the center area, we're getting really good virtual advantage because I'm holding down six units with three of mine. Honestly, I probably only needed two of them uh, to get them out of there. I probably could have used this other unit more aggressively. That's kind of what I mentioned earlier about the peculiarities of this map. The, the, the bottlenecks are so small that you really can't use all your things here. And then the kind of the, the jewel in our crown right now is that Riskard, after he goaded his opponent, or his opponent took the bait to come into the field, has killed his opponent. This is all Riskard's army. You can look at the mini-map. He's in blue. And um, from this position... Um, let me try to give you a big... Man, this map's big. Um, from this position, uh, Riskard is going to be able to run his army over here and get on the flank of this Prussian player and threaten them. And they really have to... And we're also coming up on this side, obviously, and they can't move down the middle. This is them conceding that crossing to me, and they're kind of, they have kind of have two options. I mean, they can pull back to the center area of the map where the town is, but that just means they're going to get caught in between all three of our armies, is essentially what's happening. Um, th that's really their only strategic option. The second option is obviously they just turn and try to beat us on one of the flanks. But honestly, we've killed enough of them at this point that this is not a realistic assumption. And what we're going to wind up being able to do is sort of turn and defeat them in detail. So Trip and this is me, and these are part of Trip's guys. We're going to surround and kill what's left of the French guy while Trip retreats from this stronger force who's going against this force. So this is, again, like a classic military thing. You know, um, surround, what, what is it, divide and conquer? So, you know, the, all what is this about 15 units here should be operating together as a unit bad team cohesion but because they get separated what we're able to do is overwhelm this group retreat away from this group and then in a minute we're going to be able to get back on top of these guys how often does he see a computer game really mimic real life i think that's really interesting um and then over here you know i'm able to sort of seal off um, their uh, retreat options. So essentially by placing these units here and what I'm trying to do with these two units is run them up into this gap here is we're trying to seal them off from joining forces and this is going to let Riskard who's coming up defeat this group units here. So what we're really able to do is 
we split them up into four groups and defeated those groups sort of separately. The Riskar defeated his unit that, or his opponent that came across on the the field here, which then let us isolate and. Um, so we, we, you know, we separated and defeated that unit. When they concede this crossing here, that lets us isolate this group of units. And then, but with Triphammer's flanking movement, he was able to pose a threat to the rear, which forced units to go that direction. That drew units this way, which freed me up and Triphammer to move some units up on you know, this direction to surround and defeat this person, which just leaves this little group unit. So I, I thought this was really interesting, just kind of by that meta unit positioning I was talking about earlier, we were able to sort of divide and conquer or split the opponent into a bunch of different groups. And this is true um, on all kinds of maps. This is actually relevant in the previous game on Siri that I talked about where my Austrian opponent on the right got isolated and kind of got stuck on the right side. When this happens to you, your only real option is to shoot it out. I mean, you if, if you get split up like this, you have to attack your way back to the bulk of uh, your friends or the rest of your big unit. you got to keep your army uh, sort of within communication of each other, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, and anyway, that, that that's actually kind of how the game goes. Uh, I'm not really sure where to zoom in. Th this is what happens. I mean, Riskard obviously outnumbers the hell out of this Prussian guy, and Riskard is going to be able to move in through the town there. Um, I do obviously outnumber the guy on this approach, so I'm going to be able to shoot my way through there. Um, we obviously have outnumbered and surrounded the rest of the French guys, so we're going to kill them. And then we've obviously outnumbered and surrounded th this uh, detachment here. So this, um, th I thought the the this game was really, really interesting, and uh, actually I think what I'd like to do is play this match on a straight 3v3, not a 3v4, um, but uh, I, I thought this was kind of interesting. The, I think this map could get really boring if, you know, everybody just clogs up the, um, um, the what do you call these, river crossings or whatever, Um Anyway, I don't know. I think it's kind of interesting. Uh, I think that attacking in this map is, is a real challenge. I think that if you had to play against a 3v3 against kind of dedicated campers who are good at it, you know, who who were really good, de de uh, de you know, really good, really dedicated campers, um, it would be interesting. I think even more interesting would be a match between um, six pretty aggressive players who are all willing to kind of take risks and get in there and shoot at each other. I don't know, but um, I think this map is interesting. And we did play a second game after this that um, eventually, uh, like, half the people dropped or rage quit, so we just um, restarted. And we actually used a different tactic in... Or, yeah, that's, that's right. Two of our opponents uh, rage quit um, pretty early in the game. Um, we we did a we used a different tactic in uh, in our second game and and I thought that was neat too because it sort of demonstrated that um, this this map seems simple enough because there's really those three crossing areas um, but we were able to put together kind of a different um, a different little strategy in the second game uh, and and get our opponents to concede which I thought was kind of interesting. But uh, anyway, that's the end of the game. I think I might just let you watch it. I don't think this game goes on too much longer now. Uh, these players have all been killed, and um, Riss is moving up the town. And uh, Riss actually does like fucking ninja shit. He like <laughs> that's a Polish that he just sends across the fucking bridge. And uh, <laughs> I, I have three guys sitting there that I didn't realize he was doing it. All of a sudden, I looked over and I was like, "Holy fuck! He went across the damn bridge. I, I better follow him." <laughs> you know, I mean, he's making me look like a punk. He's like, fuck it, dude. I mean, I had been sitting in front of that bridge for the whole goddamn game, and Aris just, like, casually strolls up and runs his fucking unit right across and get the guy in melee. I, I, I could have done that, like, half an hour ago. Why didn't I fucking do that? Uh, so anyway, I thought that was kind of funny, actually, that Riskar just randomly takes it upon himself to storm the fucking bridge. And uh, I, I just kind of sat there, didn't do anything, because uh, that's what I do. And uh, that that is the game, right there. Yeah, the really interesting game, really interesting game, really interesting game, and um, really interesting. 
and I didn't mind how long this game took. It took quite a while, but uh, I was I was happy to play through it. What's kind of cool when you play this sort of map is you get you get really excited over incremental advantages. Like when Trip got across this crossing, we were kind of like, "All right, that's phase one down." You know, when we got across the crossing here, we were like, "All right, phase two. You know, like you you, you stop counting your victory in in terms of units routed, but more like positions on the battlefield taken in a way it's, it's kind of interesting it's it's a bit different uh you you find yourself having a bit different approach to um how you play the game to how you play the game so anyway um thanks for watching if anybody has an idea for a video or, or, or a concept maybe that i can find a video that uh, is is relates to and get me talking about that i'm always looking for ideas um, always looking for ideas so anyway thanks for watching gg uh check out twreplays.com throw a replay up there uh to share with uh, other people who like to watch them and uh yeah that's it gg guys uh all the opponents thanks for sticking around i don't think anybody dropped out on us and so that that was nice that it doesn't happen as often as i'd hope and um, i will catch you in the next video